Hey folks, me again. <laughs> As if you didn't know that. I'm trying to button up these XS11 carbs here. And I have another video which I'll link to in the description in regards to going over them in detail and discussing some issues with the float and changing over to the original type steel float needles. And uh, I also added uh, why the customer had put the rubber tipped ones in, he had an overflow issue. Well, I got everything all set up and dialed in the float valves, flipped these over in my rack and I put fuel to them to do the static fuel test that I normally do on all carb racks. And it overflowed like a son of a gun on the number one and number two carb, the first two that I tested. I have it fixed now, and I'll show you what the problem was. It's 100%, and this video I think will help you out a lot. So let's get right to it. Hey folks, I'm out here still working on the XS11 carbs, and I think I found the carb overflow issue, but I'm not 100% sure yet. We're going to test it, and I'll show you here on camera. Now, in the last video on the carb evaluation, uh, I did mention that during editing, I put this in as a text um, on a particular part of the video, that uh, during editing, the customer reached out to me and said that uh, he had switched over to the rubber-tipped float needles or float valves because of carb overflow issues with the solid steel ones all right and i already showed you what those look like so i'm not going to do that again so so here we go i put in brand new um seats and needles the steel type the type that this is supposed to have and i've got my float tangs right where i like them and i've adjusted the float heights actually i'm readjusting it a little bit favoring lowering the fuel level in the carb and I'll explain that another time while I'm doing why I'm doing that right now but I turn these things over I put them in my rack you know the rack you've seen before in other videos uh, that grabs this little angle bracket here and leveled them out and I put fuel to them static fuel and just did these two to start with uh, this would be uh, one and two and in like 10 seconds the fuel started just flying out of the vent I mean the vent way up here when it's flipped around, it's much higher than the fuel inlet. And uh, these passed a pressure test. I mean, my pressure test showed them as good. So I'm scratching my head here trying to figure this out, and I knew I was missing something, but I just couldn't figure out what it was until just now. So it took me a while to figure this out, and I think I figured it out. We're going to find out for sure here in a minute. But I want you to take a look at the tang here, okay, on the float. This is number one. Now the tang looks good and the float level is good it's where I want it for now but what happens with these even if you have the type that has the little clip that goes around and kinda grabs this uh, tang if you have too much drop float drop in other words it's allowed to go way down like this and of course when you flip them over empty that's what happens they drop down due to Sir Isaac Newton right what can happen is when that float needle comes out, it comes out so far that it can get cocked over to the side. And then when fuel hits it and this tries to push it up, it'll, it'll sometimes bind and it will not close that float. Now to remedy that, what the manufacturers do is they put this little tang right there. And you see I have not done this one yet. You see how far that is away from there. And when you move this, it goes way up there. So if you bend this little tang back, it's a drop stop, basically. It only allows it to go that far. You don't want it solid up against there where it can't drop at all. But right now we are in the complete open position. We obviously have to have a certain amount of room here for it to open. All right, but we do not need a ton of room. I am actually may increase this a little bit because it's a little, maybe a little bit too too small but I'm gonna try it first it may be just fine there is no standard in the service data that I've ever seen in any carburetor or any motorcycle on what this drop should be you have to kind of just use your best judgment you should not need any more than that so I'm gonna leave it right here and match the other one because you know we have to do these in pairs where the inlets are and I'll go ahead and uh, we'll uh, I'll finish this up put the float bowls on 
put you in the stand and then uh, we'll recharge these two carbs and see um, how it works then. I think that's what was doing it. I'm talking like it was flying out of that um, overflow, that vent rather, like there was no floats in it at all. Like the floats were all gone. You know, and I'm like, that, that that's there's something wrong there. Because again, it passed a pressure test. So, but remember, the pressure test is in this position, not the other way around. So let me adjust this little drop stop here. This should be enough, as I said, for it to let fuel in. I think it will at least. It may increase the scotch. I don't know, but we'll uh, we'll flip them around. Or we'll see if we'll see if I'm right. All right, moment of truth. Drain plugs are tight. Float bowls are tight. And again, I'll go, if this works, at least, I'll go over why I'm doing the float level the way I am on these two carbs. This is number one and two. They're angled a little bit forward like they would be if they were into the insulators. Crush fingers and toes. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're at about 55 seconds or so. I uh, accelerated that in the video, of course, and I don't have the overflow. Like I said, it was squirting out before. In about 10, 50, 10 seconds or less, it just came right out. It filled, I don't know which carburetor it was, but it filled it right up, and since this uh, vent joint is uh, you know, connected to the two carbs, it's common to the two carbs, as is this one. Um, it just started uh, squirting out, but now we're good. Now, uh, you, you just have to kind of guess on that. All, all the float has to do is drop down a little bit to let the fuel through. And, you know, with, especially with these metal needles, um, your fuel level, in my opinion, is going to be a little higher stopping than it is on the rubber needles because the metal ones are a little less of a, of a physical connection to the float seat than the uh steel ones than the rubbers are rather rubbers but that's just a theory of mine the other theory of mine is why i went with a little bit of a higher or i should say lower float level fuel level the standard allows up to uh the float height from the base of the carb without the uh, you know the gasket surface without the gasket to be 1.051 so basically basically just about one and a sixteenth of an inch. 062 is a sixteenth. So I, what I did was I made these two um, 1.030. So that's about a third, what is that? Uh, 30 second, yeah, th zero, whoa, 15,064th, yeah. So basically 30,000 is, uh, is a 30 second, roughly. So I, I made it like one inch and a 30 second of an inch. I could have gone up to a sixteenth, so uh, we are technically within spec, and well, not technically, we are within spec as far as the float height, but it's just my experience and my feeling that the brass floats, since they seem to weigh a little bit more than the plastic ones, uh, the fuel has a little harder time raising them up. And my other theory is that when these things were built, ethanol-free wasn't even a, a thought in anybody's mind. But I think the fuels back then... Uh, were better as far as raising these fuel these floats up more efficiently, and I, I can't justify that. I can't validate it, but it just makes sense to me the, from my experience. So here we are going on uh, about uh, three and a half minutes now uh, with the fuel still on and no overflow. So that was absolutely the problem. Float drop is too far. The needle drops down with the float as it's supposed to, but it drops down so far that when the fuel comes in and starts to lift it up to push the needle closed against the seat, the needle gets a little cocked and it sticks, and then you have this situation where it just billows out, especially when it passes a pressure test. I remembered this after I thought about it for a while because it happened to me on that CB175 job. I have a couple of videos on, or at least one, I don't remember how many. Where that happened, I had to adjust the drop of the float because it jammed up and when I put fuel to it, it started overflowing immediately, just like this one did or these did in this static test. So that might help you guys out. I hope it does if you have a similar situation we're always seemingly concentrating on the closure side 
of the float and the float valve and then sometimes we really have to consider the opening side and how that's affecting that float needle through its travel. Okay I've made the same changes to 3 and 4 as I did to 1 and 2 which you already saw. We're going to do a static fuel test on 3 and 4 now and verify. Cross your fingers and toes. Here's the vent. Like I, was, I think it's a better shot of it now. You can see the vent there. It just came flying out of there. So let's see if it doesn't do that on 3 and 4 as well. Was that about 50, 60 seconds now? Looking good. And just so nobody says anything, the fuel valve is open. You gotta prove what you say. I do have the valve open on my auxiliary fuel can, which is manufactured or proved. This is the device that Yamaha says to use on this. No, it isn't. But you know, I got it open. So we are flowing fuel. And yeah, no overflow. So this is solved. So two things. Number one, um, you might say to yourself, uh, you know, hey, Mr. Tom, um, you're actually limiting the opening of the float valve, especially if you're going to be filling this up for the, you know, filling the carbs up for the first time and being it's a vacuum actuated fuel cock. Okay, that may be a valid point, but probably isn't. I'll get to that here in a second. And number two, which I'll address first is, you know, you might say, well, how come it wasn't happening with the rubber tipped fuel or float valves? You know, if the if the floats are dropping the exact same amount as they are or were rather between the rubber tipped and the steel ones, how come it wasn't doing it with both? Well, if you remember, the rubber tipped ones are slightly longer. And so because of that slight longer length they apparently were a little bit more stable with that kind of a float drop and were able to go back up in and actually seal on the float seat. That's a theory because these shorter ones that allow us to have that nice flat tang on the floats themselves are not uh, as long, of course, and they would be more prone to cocking over to the side because of that shortness. So let's get back to the first one. You only need a little bit of drop on that float to open that float valve. And even if that float valve is opening up, you know, 20, 30, 30 thou or so in there, maybe 40, um, that's plenty. Now, if you're concerned at all about whether or not maybe you have the thing remaining too closed, in other words, the float won't drop far enough, then it's an easy test. In this case, I'm t I took the plug out of number one. And uh, uh, if it's a screw type, just open the drain and then just turn it on. See what you got. Look at that. You got a lot of flow. So there's no problem with that carburetor getting filled up with fuel under these circumstances, all right? And it's gonna maintain the flow under the demands the carb requires as far as the fuel consumption goes for that particular cylinder, so yeah. And as far as filling the carbs up, you don't have to fill the carbs up. Let's say they were drained for storage or the bike hadn't been ridden in a while. You don't have to do that through vacuum because on the fuel cock you have that PRI setting, which is prime. And you open that up, that is a direct flow through the fuel cock to the carbs. That would be as if you didn't have a fuel cock at all, or it was an on-off type and you had it in the on position. So you get your carbs filled up with fuel, turn it over to on or reserve, and then you're in vacuum mode. So I just wanted to address those two things in this video. But as you can see, we have solved the issue. And if there needs to be any float level tweaking in the future, well, I'll do that later um, after we get it running and test it and so forth. Um, and it, that won't be a big problem because I'm putting on new fuel, uh, you know, holder insulators anyway. So getting these things in and out is going to be a breeze. So, yeah, um, you know, the static fuel test is really the test you need to do after rebuilding a rack. Because we can do an air pressure test or even a vacuum test on the floats all day long but where the rubber meets the road is really um, when you do a static fuel test um, on the bench for example I would recommend it on the bench as opposed to on a bike uh, then you know for sure that they're gonna hold the fuel uh, because you know that's gravity fed and it's gonna be about the same amount of fuel pressure that's being applied uh, I don't know one one and a half PSI tops maybe if, even if maybe not even that much uh, via gravity 
I guess you could figure it out, but I'm not that good at math. And if it if it uh, you know carries that amount of uh, gravity uh, pressure from the fuel, then you know it's going to work on the bike as well. Uh, you definitely want to try to keep that definitely. You definitely want to try to keep them in the position that they would typically be in when they're mounted. This actually probably should be a little further forward like this, but it's close enough for our purposes. And then, uh, yeah, but the static fuel test is really the test that you want to do to 100% verify that your carbs aren't going to overflow and that the fuel system is patent or patent, however you want to pronounce it. Well, of course, I mean your T's and the fuel, you know, for lack of a better word, the rail, if it's a single one that goes across with one inlet or the two, it don't matter. And of course, the float valves. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you learned something. I always learn things when I work on carbs. I have a lot of carb work in my video library, so probably would behoove you to ring the notification bell for even more stuff. Subscribe. Uh, look back at my videos. You can uh, look at all the carb stuff that I've done over the years here on the channel or months, whatever the hell it might be. And uh, definitely, definitely, if you would uh, consider sharing and liking the video, that certainly helps my analytics. We can help the channel grow so I can do more content like this for you. Yeah, so anyway, I hope you all have a great holiday. Thanksgiving's coming up. Don't forget, we got the 2K subscriber thing coming up here soon. And uh, I guess the last thing to say is don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.